is lesson 6.7, Applications of Sinusoidal Functions. In this lesson, the focus is on modeling situations and solving problems using these type of functions. The first thing I have right here for you is a couple notes that I want to make, just to kind of bring into perspective on the different things that we've covered in this unit and how it applies to these applications. It says in previous lessons, the scale on the horizontal uh, axis of the sinusoidal graph was in terms of pi. You notice that we're going to change things a little bit. When um, these sinusoidal graphs are used in applications like we're going to do right here, the horizontal axis usually represents time and the axis is labeled with whole numbers. So that's going to be one change that you're going to notice. Next thing I want to talk about is just uh, where you'll see these type of uh, functions. It says phenomena such as uh, the oscillation of a mass on a spring or the height of a seat on a uh, rotating Ferris wheel uh, produce measurements that vary between a maximum value and a minimum value. These phenomena can often be represented by sinusoidal functions. That's what most of our examples are going to explore. Now, this is a, a big point to make right here. Since the graph of y equals cosine of x has a maximum point on the y-axis, so if you think about that graph, it would look uh, like so, right? Do you remember it started here and then it went kind of down like so? Well, because we know that that point it starts on the, uh, the uh, y-axis right here, and that is a maximum, um, what it goes on to say is a cosine function may be used to model the data when we know this, uh, either the first uh, maximum or the first minimum point. And then what we would do is we can figure out, um, it says then the phase shift is the horizontal distance from the vertical axis to this point. So let's say that this graph was actually kind of over here, then we can figure out how far this graph has actually been moved over. We can determine its phase shift. All right. So often um, we'll use uh, the graph of y equals cosine of x again when we know either the maximum or the minimum. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to attack uh, two, di two different examples in this lesson. All right, example one says, a piston moves vertically in a cylinder starting from its minimum height. Every 20 seconds, the piston repeats its cycle from a minimum height of 15 centimeters to a maximum height of 35 centimeters back to a minimum height of 15. So it's going back and forth between 15 and uh, a maximum of 35. All right. So the first thing that I would do is why don't we just draw ourselves a little bit of uh, a picture um, to show ourselves what's going on here. So this will be my graph like so. Um, this will be time measured on this axis and this will be height measured on this axis. Okay. Now if we label it appropriately right here, um, it makes sense here that it says every 20 seconds, um, essentially that is our period right there. So I'm going to put uh, maybe 20 seconds to be right here, and we'll put uh, 10 seconds to be right here. Okay. If we take a look at the heights, well, what heights are we talking about? Well, I'm going to make this be 15, that's going to be your minimum height, and I'm going to make this be 35 right here. Okay. Now if I graph this with a different color, what we would see is we'd have something like this. At time 0, it would be at 15, and then at time 10, because if we know it makes an entire period of 20 seconds, that must mean that the maximum is reached right here. And then we come back down to 20 seconds, and then the graph, of course, would keep on going like so. Okay, the, the piston, if you will. So in order to determine an equation for this function, we're going to have to first start by finding our a value, our amplitude. In order to do that, we have to find our midline. Now, I think you can probably see that our midline is not where it normally is, right? And normally, it's right on the, uh, the x-axis, but you can probably see that it's somewhere right along here. The question is, how am I going to find where this midline is, like so? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my maximum point, which is 35, I'm going to add it to my minimum point, which is 15, and just divide it by 2. Okay? So if you want to write a little bit of a note right there, let's say that we are going to locate the center line. Okay? And in order to do this, we will say that h is equal to 35 plus 15. Okay, so my maximum and my minimum point, and we're going to just divide that in half. And when you do that, we find that that line is at 25. All right? Now, knowing that that line is at 25 tells us that, well, if this line right here is at 25, how much is it to get to 35? Well, it would just be 10. How much is it to get to 15? It would just be 10. So we can uh, now deduct the information that we know that our A value, our amplitude, is 10. All right? So that's the first thing that we're going to need to do. Okay, the next thing we need to do is let's identify what our period is. And I want you just to make a little note here, I'm going to write it in brackets, is that since, and I referenced this when we were talking about the, uh, the first uh, part of the notes here, since the position of the maximum, so this would be my maximum right here, since the position of the max is known, use the cosine function. 
Okay. So the reason why we want to do that is because we know that the max is right here, I'm going to be able to just determine what that phase shift is. Because we know that the max of a cosine function normally occurs on this x-axis, so that right there will represent the phase shift when we get to it. Now in terms of period, well, we can see the period quite clearly. It takes 20 seconds. So we're going to have um, the period right here is 20 seconds. But uh, what we need to do is we always have to, to determine what the actual period is, is we have to reference our regular graph of cosine. So we take the reciprocal of 1 over 20, and we multiply it by what the period is for our graph of the cosine function, which is 2 pi. And if you simplify this, 1 over 20 times 2 pi gives you a period of pi over 10. Okay? So we've determined what A is, we've determined what our period is. Next thing we need to do is we need to determine what the phase shift is. Now phase shift for this ends up being really easy. If we go back up to our graph right there, um, remember what we're, we're assuming that this point is a, uh, a regular cosine graph, so it would hit on the x-axis. How, um, how many units has been moved over? It's been moved over 10 seconds. So we're going to say that the phase shift, the variable that we use for it, is going to be c, is equal to 10. Okay? And then the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much has this graph been moved up or down, um, so our d value. And so our d value in this case, I think you'll be able to see that's referencing our center line, and that's really what we just did right here. Um, it's been moved up 25, so we can say that d is equal to 25 right there. Okay. So I think we have all the information that we need to know. Uh, now what we can say is we can say our function uh, h of t, okay, the height is a function of time, was equal to our a value was 10. And then we have cosine of our, um, our period. Our period is pi over 10. And that is multiplied by t minus the phase shift. The phase shift it was 10. And then how much are we moving that graph up by? We're moving it up by 25. All right. So this right here ends up being our function for this scenario. All right. Now, finally, after you've made that function, the next thing that it asks you to do is it says uh, use technology to graph this function, then estimate the height of the piston 26 seconds after it begins uh, moving. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get you guys to take this function that we have right here, and um, you can actually find what it is just by using your calculator. And so because it says it's looking for it at uh, t26, what you can do is you can go h of 26 is equal to 10 cosine of pi for 10, and then this would end up being 26 minus 10 plus 25. And if you simplify this, it would be 10 cosine of uh, 26 minus 10 is 16. So this ends up being 16 pi over 10 plus 25. Okay. And then I encourage you to put that into your calculator. Again, make sure that you're in radians. And when you do that, you will get approximately 28 centimeters. Now I thought it would be useful, um, why don't we go over to Desmos and actually take a look at what this graph looks like using the technology that they were talking about and uh, confirm if our answer was indeed correct. Alright, so let's go over to Desmos. Okay, so you'll notice that I've put in the function into Desmos right here. Of course, we, um, we need to put in variables of x, even though x really represents time right here. So you'll see how I did it. That's the exact function that we came up with. Another thing I just want to point out is if you are using Desmos, I took the liberty of changing the x-axis right here. Um, because we can't have uh, negative values, I just I put a little bit of a negative in there just so you can kind of see how it works. But uh, we don't need to have any negatives because we're dealing with time. And then I had to go to, for, uh, to 40 because I knew my period was 20, so I'd see a couple of the different um, uh, revolutions. And then the next thing um, I changed is I changed my y-axis right here, right, because the minimum value we're going to have on our graph, as you can see right here, was 15, and the maximum was 35. I do it always a little bit more and a little bit less. Same with up here, um, just so you can see what's going on. And then, of course, that we are in radians right here. Okay, So if we get rid of that, uh, you'll see we have the function. It is relatively similar to what I had sketched out right there. Obviously, it looks a little bit prettier. All right, so the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to reference that last part of the question. The last part of the question said at time 26 seconds, when we put it into our calculator, uh, we ended up getting a height of 28 centimeters. And so let's see if our, uh, our graph confirms that. If we click on that point, uh, we have exactly 26 seconds and uh, approximately 28 centimeters. So that confirms that. All right, so let's go back over to our notes. All right, example two. You'll notice it's a little bit different than the previous example because we have a, uh, a set of data right here. It goes on to say that the following data show the predicted tide heights every two hours starting at midnight for St. Andrews PEI on March 9th, 2011. And so what we have right here is we have our time, and so it's written in the 24-hour clock if you're wondering why it looks like that. And then we also have the height right here, and the height is measured in terms of meters. 
And so uh, what we need to do with this is it says graph the data, then write an equation um, that models the data. Okay, so relatively straightforward. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to the uh, the grid that I've given you right here, and I don't think I've given you um, a big enough grid, but we'll we'll try to make it work. Uh, and just get ourselves uh, ready to go. So we do that by labeling our axes. We have time on this axis, and we will make this zero. Um, so we have zero right here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And I think this was the error I was talking about, is that we need to kind of go over technically one more right to that point. Uh, we also have height, and height uh, we'll put on this side, and we will label it. We're going to go up by increments of one, so we have one, uh, two, three, four, five, and six. And I think our maximum height is six and a bit, so we'll go up to a seven or so. So I think that's all we need to do. So now what we're ready to do is we're ready to take these data points and go and uh, and graph them. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and graph all those points on here, and I would encourage you to do the same. Okay, so now that we've graphed the data, what we're going to start doing is trying to uh, determine what this function is uh, for this data. So we're going to start by writing the format for our function. So it's going to have to go into this format like so. And we're going to have to identify these uh, variables of A, B, C, and D. The first thing I'm going to uh, get you guys to recognize is that we have a maximum for this function. It looks like it's going to be that value right there. So I'm going to say that the max is that ordered pair, and it's at 0, 2. So at 2 hours, it is at a height of 6.5. And then at time 8 hours right here, we have a minimum. And so this min right here is at 8 hours, it is at 1.4, okay? So what I know is if that is my maximum value, and that's my minimum value, I can use this information to try to figure out how far this graph has been moved up or down. And so if I take these two values, very similar to what I did before in the previous example, and I add them together, 6.5 plus 1.4, and if I divide that in half, you end up getting what our value of d is. And so it ends up telling us that our value of d right here ends up equaling 3.95. Okay, so that's how far that this graph has been moved up. That essentially has found me what this midpoint is going to be. Okay, um, or a midline, I guess I should call it. Now that I have that value of d, right, that's good, you should be able to now find what our value of a is. So how far from 3.95 does it take me to get to my either my minimum uh, down here or my maximum? Well, let's uh, go and figure out that. So now, of course, we're keying in on amplitude, so maybe we'll just write that down, amplitude. And so amplitude, I'm just going to choose to take my maximum point and then my midline, so I will take 6.5, and I'll subtract 3.95. And when you do this, you end up getting a value of A is equal to 2.55, okay? So two out of the uh, four things, so A and D, we figured out. We now need to figure out um, our value of B, our period, and then we also need to get C, our uh, phase shift, okay? So in order to get our period, let's write period down right here. Uh, well, let's take a look. How long does it take our graph to um, to get back up to the same point? Well, if you take a look, uh, this occurred right here, that maximum at 2 hours. This one occurred at 14 hours, so I would say that that would be a 12-hour period. So period I'm going to write is approximately 12 hours. So in order to determine our um, value of B, what we do is we take the reciprocal of 12, so we have 1 12th. Since we are using, again, a graph of cosine right here, then what we will do is we will take 2 pi, that is the regular um, uh, period, like so. And if you simplify this, it gives you pi over 6. Okay, So that would be our value of b right there, if you want to write that in. Okay? Last thing we need to do is we need to determine what the phase shift is. Okay, and again, that's super straightforward. Um, just to remind you why we took the graph of uh, cosine rather than sine is because we knew what the maximum was right there. And so then just allows us to figure out how far this has been shifted over. And I think you guys can see it's two units. So we're going to say that the phase shift is C is equal to 2. Okay. So we have everything that we need right here. We can now write what the function is. It's H of T is equal to my A value is 2.55 right here. 
cosine of my value for b was pi over 6, right, my period. And then I multiply that by my phase shift, so t minus 2. We've moved it over 2 in the right direction, so minus 2. And then where was that midline? That midline had been moved up 3.95 right there. So that would be the equation of this um, set of data. All right. If we move on to the next page, the last thing I want you to do is I want you to use technology again. So we'll go and plunk this into Desmos and then estimate the uh, tide height at 17 um, o'clock. All right. So another way that we could do this is you could simply just take um, this function right here and substitute in 17. h of 17 is equal to 2.55 cosine of pi over 6. And then you have 17 minus 2 plus 3.95. And if you simplify that a bit, it would be cosine of 17 minus 2 would give you 15. So you'd have 15 pi over 6 plus 3.95. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get approximately a height of uh, 4 meters. Okay, I think it uh, works pretty nicely to be 4 meters. Now, let's, uh, as I said, let's just quickly go over to Desmos and confirm that this is the case. Okay, so you'll notice that I've taken the equation and I've put it into uh, Desmos right here, like so. And I just wanted to show you once again, I changed the, uh, the window settings a little bit. I took values of x, because remember we were dealing with one day. So I took negative 1 and then I went to 24, because our last uh, data set was at 22. And then uh, for the height right here, our minimum height would be 0, and our maximum height I think was 6 and a bit, so I went up to 7. So everything fit in really nicely, gave me a good looking graph like so. So we can see what's going on right here. Of course, we have our, uh, our maximum values right there. Um, the one thing I just wanted to confirm was on the previous page, we said that at uh, 17 o'clock, the, uh, the height of the tide was at roughly uh, 4. And you can see that that uh, shouldn't surprise you much. And so if we take a look at this point right here, let's click on it we get at roughly 17, tough to click on 17 exactly, there it is, uh, we are at 3.95, which rounds it up to 4. Okay. All right, so that concludes this lesson. We learned how we could uh, model situations and solve problems using these sinusoidal functions. All right, thank you very much.